God bless you. Welcome, everyone. We just sang a song, Rise, O Lord. It uh, was a beautiful song, a bit high for singing, but thank God that we can sing uh, of our blessed Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Where well, We, we want to say Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, actually, to everyone. Welcome to the meeting. We are studying together uh, in our evenings on our Friday Bible classes of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. We are studying the book of Daniel, and we have arrived uh, in this uh, uh, ministry meeting tonight to Daniel chapter 6. As before, we mentioned that Friday morning, the book of Ephesians. Friday night, the book of Daniel. Shabbat, Saturday afternoon, the Gospel of John. And everyone is welcome for these meetings. We are very thankful to the Lord that we can study the Word of God together. So will you please open your Bibles to uh, the book of Daniel. We are now in Daniel chapter 6. In our previous uh, Bible class, brothers and sisters, we have covered last week, Daniel chapter 6, we've covered the first nine verses. So what I would like to do in this session to begin the reading from Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, we will read it to verse, uh, to verse 17, Daniel chapter 6 and verse 17, but we will pray first of all so we can commit the meeting to the Lord. Let's just ask the Lord to bless us. Uh, Abba, our Father, we just thank you for your word. Bless your word now, we pray as we study together the book of Daniel. For we ask it in Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's so important to remember to pray, to ask the Lord to bless us as we read the Word of God together. So, everyone have the Bible to Daniel chapter 6, and we are reading from verse 10. Verse 10 to verse 17. So please follow me as I'm reading this uh, portion. Verse 10 uh, we read, now when Daniel knew uh, that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did a full time. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persian, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, Regardless not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased within himself, and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these Men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persian is that no decree, no statute which the king established may be changed. Then verses 16 and 17. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought 
and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that a purpose might not be changed concerning a Daniel. Well, brothers and sisters, I will stop here with the reading right now, and I would like just to make a little bit reference to the previous verses that we read, and then to continue on with this portion from verse 10 on. Again, it is good for us to remember the setting. It is always good. Every study that we uh, study together, it is good to take five minutes or so just to go back into where we find ourselves. The people of Israel were taken captive by the Babylonian. Daniel himself at about 605 BC. Later on in, uh, in 586 BC, the temple was destroyed. Daniel is now with his friends, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, and all the Jewish people that were carried to Babel. They are now in the land of Babylon, and in the land of Babylon, if you remember, God gave the people of uh, 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 Israel, and of course specifically to Daniel, and to Nebuchadnezzar, but Daniel gave him the interpretation of the times of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles will include the ruling of the Gentile nations various empires over the nation of Israel and over the whole world. Well, when we arrive to Daniel chapter 6, really the end of the Babylonian kingdom or the Babylonian empire came to fruition. 539 BC, the Medo-Persian came, took over Babylon, and now there is another empire called the Medo-Persian Empire. At the end of chapter 5, I mentioned that it is where Darius, the Mede, verse 31 of Daniel chapter 5, he received the kingdom uh, of the province of Babylon from Cyrus, and now he is ruling over the uh, uh, province of Babylon under, you might say, the the reign or the empire of the Medo-Persian. Now, the, this man, by the name of Darius, was a, 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 a king only of the province of uh, Babylon, but he was under King Cyrus. And by that time, King Cyrus was much more powerful than the Medes, and he was the one uh, that the, the, the Persian was the one that now were, you might say, greater in power than the Medes. But nevertheless, it was a Medo-Persian empire, and we have seen it in the image that we have uh, uh, learned from in Daniel chapter 2. Well, now we are in chapter 6, and in chapter 6, we have, we have moved now to another empire, no longer the Babylonian, but then we have the Medo-Persian. Well, the Medo-Persian, there's a new king, his name was Darius, or Daryavish, in Hebrew. Daryavesh, Darius is now ruling over the province uh, of the Babylonian province, the city of Babylon, but under, again, under the rule of the Medo-Persian. Well, notice what we have covered already, verses 1 to 9. We have learned that in verses 1 to 9, Darius the king of the, of the Medes, and he elevated Daniel in his kingdom. And why did he elevate Daniel in his kingdom? Because Daniel was a man of God. He had a, a, an excellent spirit. Notice verse through verse three. It says an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to make him to rule over all the whole realm. Well, because he was going to be now placed over the whole realm of King Darius, well, his fellow, uh, you might say. A fellow leaders in uh, in the in the, in the media media Persian Empire, they were not happy with it. So there was jealousy over Daniel, and that's why in verses four, all the way to verse nine, 
the enemies of Daniel who envied him and did not want to give him that place of you know, un under King Darius, that he will be the one that is over all those that were the princes and the presidents. So they did not want it. Out of jealousy, they sought to find fault in him that he will not receive that position. And it's so true because in every generation, God's people are always facing opposition in the world in which we live in. It happened in Jewish history and it happened in church history. When godly believers who want to live for the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, they will experience opposition in the world in which we live in. So they sought to find fault in Daniel and they sought to find fault in him, verses 4 five, six, seven, eight, and nine, they sought to find fault in him in his faithfulness in the realm of the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. But they couldn't find any fault in him. We have already learned this. In verse four, he was faithful. The scripture teaches us it is required from a servant that he may be found faithful. Daniel was a faithful, godly man uh, who was taken captive from Jerusalem, from Israel, from Judea, but now he is in the diaspora, in the dispersion. He never changed his relationship with the God of Israel. He never stopped to seek to obey the Torah, the law that God had given to Israel. He always had on his mind the God of Israel and his people. And wherever he was, he was faithful to his God. You notice what we read here in verse 5. And then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. Except, where are we going to find an occasion to find fault in him? Well, we will find it in he, with, against him concerning the law of his God. Daniel was obedient to the law of the God of heaven, that is, the God of Israel. Well, so what did they do? They assembled together. And they came now to the king, the king Darius, and he was so proud, and he, was, uh, uh, he didn't sense what they were trying to do to him. And so they came to him, and you remember, we have already discussed this in verses 6 and 7, the presidents, the princes approached King Darius and they came together and you notice they consulted together. They, are, they gather together, they consult together, they approach the king find, and, and seek to find an accusation against Daniel and now they want him to make a certain rule and certain laws that will bring about the fall of Daniel. And so remember what the request was from the king. We read in verse 8, and in verse 8 they said, O king, establish a decree and sign the writing that it, should be in, uh, that it will not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persian, which altereth not. In other words, what was the sign that he was going to sign, the decree that he was going to, to send forward? It is that no one, according to verse 7 and 8, no one could ask anyone, no one could ask any God, no one could ask any man, no one could pray to his own God or her own God, no one could do so except they will do so when they ask, first of all, a Darius. In other words, for one month, for 30 days, no one could pray to his or her own God. Now you can just imagine it was applied to all the nations, but they had in mind specifically Daniel, these men that came from Judea, from the land of Israel. So what to do? Notice that. In this, in this verse, notice in verse uh, 9, that's where we stop in our previous uh, lesson together. Well, wherefore King Darius, what did he do? He signed the writing and he signed the decree. He probably was so pleased and so happy that he could now, wow, look at this. My counselors and my governors, my princes, my president, they so much appreciate me that they want that anyone before he or she would pray to any other God, any God, they must first come for me. 
and that decree would be for 30 days. By the way, in the in in uh, in biblical calendar, a full month it is 30 days. It is exactly 30 days in the Hebrew, the biblical calendar. So one month, we uh, want King Darius that everyone will come to uh, to you before they ask any of their own God. Well, now notice, brothers and sisters, in the next verses, uh, verses 10 on to verse 17. Two things we want to uh, listen to in these, in these verses. First of all, we see Daniel's uncompromising steadfastness. For him, nothing changed. He has a re relationship with his God. He has a relationship with the God of his fathers, the God of Israel. He is not going to change. He is going to continue to do that which he has done before. He doesn't harm anyone. He doesn't uh, cause anyone uh, to stumble. He simply uh, does what he does all the time. And he's going now and he's going to continue to do what he always did. And this is uh, praying, communicating with the God of heaven with the God of Israel. And so notice that. Very interesting because in verse uh, 10, Daniel knew of the evil plan of his, uh, of his own enemies. You see, he was a discerning man. He knew very well what his enemies want from him. He knew very well that his enemies sought to cause him to stumble. He was discerning man. He was a wise, godly man. Uh, that is now for years he was faithful in the uh, in uh, in the time when he was under King uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the Babylonian Empire, and now he continues to be faithful in, uh, in the Middle Persian Empire. He is now much older than before. We said that this time, chapter six, is about 539 BC. In other words, many years have passed by. Some. Uh, um, uh, we might say uh, uh, he's now by the, about 66 years old, if he was 15 years old when he came out of Judea, when he was taken by Babylon. So he's now a wise uh, uh, man. Now, mind you, even when he was young, he was faithful, young boy. Uh, his name, Daniel, God is my judge. By virtue of his name, we see the character of this person. So he knew. He knew uh, that the writing was signed. He also, he continued, and he went to his own house. His window is, is being opened uh, in his chamber. Now notice, towards the city of Yerushalayim. He never forgot the city of Yerushalayim. He never for a moment neglected to remember the city of Jerusalem to remind you that in Babylon, the song was there in Psalm 137. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Psalm 137, verse 5. Um, and then he continued, If I do not remember thee, let my tongue Cleave to the, to the roof of my mouth if I prefer no Jerusalem above my chief joy. He never forgot the city of Jerusalem. He never forgot the land of Israel. And the song was sung by the rivers of Babylon. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So Daniel is faithful uh, to the city of his father, the land of his forefathers, the temple in the city of Jerusalem. And so what does he do? He's going to his house. Darius already signed a decree. So he's going to his house. He went and he began to pray. Notice that it's so interesting because his window, notice verse 10, his window a windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Now you ask yourself why it is so important to open the window towards the city of Jerusalem. 
Just put your finger here and go to 1 Kings chapter 8. Do you remember when King Solomon had built the temple in Jerusalem? When he dedicated the temple to the God of Israel, King Solomon said, this is so beautiful, brothers and sisters, King Solomon knew very well that the people of God will wonder, that they will, uh, that they will disobey the Lord. That the time will come when they will be taken captive. So King Solomon prayed for God to allow his people to pray towards this city, towards this temple. Notice 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 29 and verse uh, 30. Solomon, Shlomo, his name in Hebrew, he was praying. Notice he asked, first of all, just to read you verse 27. Solomon, after he finished to build the temple, he asked God, Will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. In other words, Solomon understood that God cannot be limited to a building, to a structure. And therefore he was praying to God and he asked God, Is it possible? Will God be a dwelling on earth? He continued, verse 27, B, and he says, Behold, even the heaven, the heavens of heaven cannot contain God. How much more or how much less this house that I have built? King Shlomo is praying when he dedicated the temple to the God of Israel. And yet notice if you're going down, verse 29. I'll read verse 28. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant. And to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee this day. Verse 29, that thine eyes may be opened toward this house, night and day, even towards the place which thou hadst said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Now notice what he says in verse 30. Hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people, verse 30, Israel, when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest, forgive. King Solomon wanted the forgiveness of God when the people of Israel will pray toward this place. A little bit further down, notice that, verses 46, 47, and 48, there Shlomo continued to say, and if they sin, verse 46, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away. Notice this. Solomon is almost like a prediction that the Jewish people will sin and disobey God, and that the Jewish people will be carried away from the land, from the promised land, from the city of Yerushalayim. He said they will be carried, they will carry them away, verse 46, captive unto a land of their enemies, far even or near. Then verse 47, 48, Yet if they shall, if they shall bethink themselves in the land uh, whither they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captive, saying, We have sinned, and have done uh, perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward this or toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which they, I have built for thy name. Then notice verse 49, Then hear thou their prayers, 
and of supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and, uh, and maintain their cause and verse 50 and forgive brothers and sisters imagine that king shlomo knew ahead of time that somehow the jewish people imagine once the temple just had its building he by divine inspiration have prayed in such a way to his god that if the Jewish people, God's chosen people, will be carried away, away from the promised land, and they will confess and repent and will ultimately be restored, that God will listen to their cry and restore them back to himself. You know, in reality, beloved brothers and sisters, that even takes us all the way to the future day. When Israel, the people of Israel, the Jewish people during the tribulation period, they will come to God, they will turn to God, they will look upon the one that they have not accepted from generation to generation, and they will repent, and ultimately God will restore them uh, for this wonderful promise of the Messianic kingdom. It is fascinating to see that Daniel is a representation of the future remnant of Israel that will ultimately come to repent before the Lord. And so Daniel practiced. What did he practice? He practiced what he was taught throughout his youth concerning what will happen during the time when his own people will be taken away uh, to be captive. Turn with me to Psalm, Psalm 55 also. Psalm 55, and there we read in verse 17. Notice it is very interesting because we do read in this in this Psalm 55 and verse 17, we read this expression. Notice in verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. This is the Psalm that David wrote. Notice David, evening, morning and noon. Why does he begin with evening? Because the in the in the biblical calendar the day begins at evening we are starting now on friday night here it is already the shabbat it's already the new day it is saturday it is the shabbat it is the new day and the 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 people of israel prayed three times a day why because there were sacrifices that were offered morning sacrifices and evening sacrifices and daily sacrifice they were what we call an ongoing sacrifices without any stop and therefore three times a day the evening the morning and at noon the people of israel are still praying it is actually they have named the morning prayer is called shacharit the uh, afternoon prayer called mincha and the uh, evening prayer called Mariv. And these prayers are on, ongoing, are prayed every day. So Daniel, what does he do? He's going to his house. He's opening the windows towards the city of Jerusalem. Notice he's kneeling. And then he's upon his knees. Notice it says in verse 10, three times a day. Exactly on the basis of what we heard in Psalm 55 17 on the basis of numbers chapter 28 the morning and evening and noon sacrifices that israel were offering continuously and here daniel is praying and notice he's going on his knees and he's praying and he gave thanks before god as notice as he did the full time didn't change now he you might say well daniel why uh, why don't you best just uh, walk around the house and close the windows and stop to pray or maybe pray quietly that nobody see you on your knees and nobody see you praying now daniel of course didn't do it for a show it was something that was part of his life of his routine and uh, it is so precious to see that uh, uh, of course uh, uh, for us the lesson is also how important it is for us also to pray daily to pray in the morning when we get up to pray together 
with our wives, or with our children, when, they, when they're under our, our responsibility, to take the time to pray. And when we end the day, and to, to as well, uh, individually and collectively with, uh, with our wives and family, to take the time to pray, to give thanks. To give thanks, I remember years ago was such an encouragement for us, for my dear wife Irene and myself, when uh, one sister, when Irene was pregnant, told us that, you know, don't wait till this child will be old, but take the opportunity to pray with your, ch with your children every day. Like you commit them to the Lord, but nevertheless to pray, it is essential. The fellowship with God, the prayer uh, to ask the Lord for grace and mercy. And here Daniel was in a need, so he continued to do what he did before, but now he had additional reason to pray and to ask the Lord. So he went there, he was uh, on his knees, and he was praying. Doesn't it remind you what the Apostle Paul wrote? If you don't mind, to turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 3. The Apostle Paul wrote of himself in Ephesians chapter 3 when he was praying for the Ephesian believers to the local assembly at Ephesus. We read of the Apostle Paul in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. We read, Wherefore uh, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory, he said to the brothers and sisters at Ephesus. And then he says in verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle Shaul Paul bowed his knees. Now again, to remind you, brothers and sisters, he was a, a parush, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He have learned this from past history because that was the manner in which uh, the people of Israel were taught. Now today, uh, there's not, uh, this is not practiced as much among the people of Israel, but nevertheless, you could see that Daniel have done so, uh, Shlomo have done so, Shaul Paul have done so, going on their knees, expression of dependence, turning to God for help and for counsel. So now as we're going back to our chapter, in verse uh, uh, 11 now, um, in verse 11, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Well, here they caught him. See, how to, up, to, up to this point, they were trying to find some fault in him, to find accusation against him, but they could not find him because they could not find any accusation against him because he was faithful. He was a man that was a blessing there in the realm of the kingdom of Daryavish, Darius. As he was faithful in the Babylonian Empire, he was now faithful in the empire of the Medo-Persian. So they couldn't find any fault with him in his behavior, in his conduct, in his faithfulness as he was serving the king. But here they found something that they can accuse him. But they were already planning this because they've asked the king, they beguiled King Daryavesh, King Darius, they made him sign this decree which cannot be altered. Now they've gone, they knew what Daniel will do. No one could pray to any God for 30 days. They caught him praying to his own God. Again, notice they're always assembling together. They're always consulting together. The, those who oppose God and God's people always seek to do something against God's people. Well, they were successful this time because what did they do? They, what did they find? They found Daniel making supplication before his God. And so you notice now in verses, in the next verses, this is really verses 12 to 17. Now that they could verify that he violated the decree of the king. Now they can approach the king and get things settled by having Daniel uh, demoted and really actually lose his life. So notice how, uh, what they are doing in verses 12, first of all, you see the, the 
Um, in verse 12, we, we see, And they came near, they spake before the king, they spake before him concerning the king's decree, and they reminded him, Hast thou not signed the decree, that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? So now they're going to the king and they remind him, it's amazing to see how the king was not wise enough to discern that they are, have something in their mind when they all of a sudden come to him and they tell him, uh, Oh king, we want that everyone will, uh, will uh, not be able to pray to any God except through you. So they were very wise. And so now they caught Daniel, they come before the king and they're reminding him, Oh king, didn't we, didn't you sign the decree? And so notice what we read, uh, and, and they continue to say in verse 12, O king, uh, that anyone who asks any petition shall be cast into the den of lions. And so the king answered and he said, The thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persian, which altereth not, and you notice, it is the law of the Medes and the Persian. And I mentioned this earlier. It's not the first time that we find this expression mentioned here because in other passages, in the book of Esther, for example, and I mentioned it in our previous uh, Friday night Bible class, that when, when uh, the king signed a decree to kill all the Jewish people that Haman sought to destroy, he couldn't alter his decree because he signed it. And the law of the Median Persian could not be altered. It could not be altered. And so notice actually if you go back to verse 8. And it says in verse 8. Now O king establish the decree. Sign the writing. That it be not changed. Notice according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. Which altereth. Not. If there was a law signed by the, the king in a decree, it could never change. In the days of Esther, in the days of Haman, King Ahasuerus had to give, to provide another decree instead of the other one, or I should say in addition to the other decree, and there the decree was that the Jewish people could protect themselves from their enemies and therefore they were not destroyed by Haman. But here, beloved brothers and sisters, the decree was made and now a, a King Darius could not change it. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, listen to this as we are moving down here. In verse 13 and verse 14, the accusation of Daniel before, before King Darius. Then answered them, they said before the king, that Daniel, now notice that, you can see that there is an accusation specifically against these godly men. And uh, they very well knew where he came from. Because they say, it says, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, in other words, this Jewish man, that came from Judea, you remember him? He doesn't regard anything that you say, O king, nor the decree that you have decreed, that you have signed, but he makes his petition three times a day. And notice they are zeroing in on these men, these specifically, and I'm emphasizing this, that beloved brothers and sisters, this is important to realize. Why is it that since these days when Israel was deported from the land of Canaan and the times of the Gentiles had begun, that there is constant persecution of the Jewish people that occurred throughout history? Throughout history, and Daniel is only one evident of that which we can see here in the Middle Persian Empire. Here, these uh, princes, these presidents, uh, are accusing, notice that Daniel, 
which is of the children of the captivity of Judah. They knew very well who he was. His background. He came from Judea. His name was Daniel. He was part of those that had been taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC, in 597 BC, and in, of course, 586 BC. So that's the one that have done. He doesn't care for what you say. He doesn't regard thee. He's, uh, he has, uh, doesn't care for your petition. And you know what he does? King Darius, he's praying three times a day. And so, of course, you can see now that the accusation, what the king could do. In verse 14, the king, when he heard these words, now you would think that he would be a, a angry at Daniel. But you see, beloved brothers and sisters, Darius, Daryavish, he actually cared for Daniel. He knew very well that Daniel was a benefit for him. He could trust Daniel. If you go back to the earlier verses in verse 3 of Daniel chapter 6, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes. Why was he preferred? Because there was an excellent spirit that was in him. He was a godly man. You know, any godly brother and godly sister, a Christian, a believer today, in a world in which we live in, is a blessing in this world in which we live in. To have a godly teacher in school, to have a, to have a godly uh, 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 people uh, wherever in, in, in various areas in the, in the world in which we live in, the godly believers, the godly Christian, Messiah followers today in the church age are an asset to this world in which we live in. In fact, I would like just to read one more verse, if you don't mind, to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. We read of the, the godly men and women of old in the history, in, in, in Hebrews 11, in the history of Israel, but we can apply this to the whole, uh, uh, to the godly people in every uh, uh, period of time. It says uh, in verse... Um, and um, I'll just read the chapter 11 uh, and the, the last portion of this chapter. What shall we say more? Verse 32. For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Shimshon and Iftach and David <coughs> and Shmuel and the prophets who through faith subdue kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of uh, of lions. Who is the one who stopped the mouth of lions? We will talk about it later in our, pre in our next week. This is Daniel, by the grace of God, of course. Quench the violence of, of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed violent in fight. Turned to flight the enemies of the airlines. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And he continued to give us this list in verse 36 and 37. Others had trial of cruel mocking and scourges, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Verse 37, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskin and and goatskin being destitute and afflicted and tormented. And he tells you in verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. The world is not worthy of the people of God that God have allowed to stay here in this world. The world is not worthy of them. And yet, God blessed the world by the godly men and women in every period of time in human history. And Israel history, in church history, the godly men and women are blessing here in the world. So notice what we read. King Darius, I'm back to Daniel chapter 6. It says here in verse 14, when he heard these words, he was so displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored all the 
uh, all the time till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He, you see, beloved brothers and sisters, King Darius appreciated Daniel. Daniel was a blessing to King Darius. And he's, he was not displeased with Daniel. You notice that? He was not displeased that Daniel prayed to his God. He knew very well that Daniel was praying to his God all the time. But he was displeased with himself because he failed to be wise and discerning to know that these men, these princes and presidents in his is in his uh, realm, they did not care for him. No wonder we read in verse 3 of our chapter that he sought, he thought to set Daniel over all his realm. The 120 princes, there will be three presidents, and then Daniel will be over the three presidents and the 120 uh, princes, and he will be directly communicating with King Darius. But what happened? King Darius failed and he was, as it says here, so displeased within himself. He was uh, displeased about what he has done. And so we read that the whole, notice, until the evening, verse 14, he labored, he sought to find a way, how can I save Daniel? How can I, I, how can I not uh, cast him into the, uh, to, to this den of lions? If he's going to go into the den of lions, he'll be done. He will be, he will be destroyed in a moment. So he was laboring all night to try to, you might say, avert, avert the decree that he has made. But here, notice that hmm, how wicked you know, beloved brothers and sisters, the, 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 those that counsel together against the, the ones that they are jealous over, they will go to any extreme just to put away their opponent or someone that they don't like. It is amazing what the human heart can do. That's why we, we, we realize in a world in which we live in, uh, no wonder in the political realm and in other areas there is constant friction. Sadly, even in Christian ministry, the same old nature that is rising within us, and if we are not careful to judge ourselves, we fail in this as well. Believers, are we have this old sinful nature just like the unbelieving world. And what we are capable to do as believers because of the old nature is just as much as the unbelievers. And that's why what a lesson it is for us to seek the welfare of our beloved brothers and sisters. We fail in it. We admit that. But God can give the grace uh, to help in this. So notice that in verse 15 now, we see the... The, uh, in verse 15, notice that these men, they assemble again. Notice, again, they assemble, they assemble, they assemble. They are doing this thing together, opposing Daniel, beguiling the king, and the aim was to destroy these Jewish men. And so these men assembled together unto the king. They said unto him, unto the king, No, O king, notice they remind him. They remind him of the law of the Medes and Persians. They are, you know, you might say, uh, those who are trying to help the king to remember the rules of the land. And so these men assembled unto the king. They said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persian, that no decree, no status which the king established may ever change. You cannot change it, king. See, they determine, they determine to put away Daniel really to death. And they do that because of envy and jealousy. And imagine, what is the fault? What did he do? He prayed. He spoke to his God. This is his accusation. You think of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, when he was accused. Accused by his own people. 
accused by the Romans, by the Gentile world, accused by all men. His accusation was, this is Yeshua, the king of the Jews, in all the languages. They accused him for no reason. This man have done, even the thief on the cross said, this man have done nothing amiss. And yet they hung him on a cross, on the tree. See how wicked the human heart is? And so here they are reminding King Darius of the law of the Medes and the Persian. Don't forget, O king, you made a decree. And you cannot change your decree. You have to follow the decree. And uh, you have established this. Follow through with it. And make sure that you cast this man, Daniel, into the lion's den. After all, King Darius, we wanted your good. We wanted that you will be the one that everyone will come through you. And no one will be able to pray to any other God except coming through you for 30 days. Well, now notice the conclusion for us for today and for this portion. In verses 16 and 17, the inability of King Darius to deliver Daniel from the punishment that is now going to fall upon him. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel. Can you imagine? Can you imagine an innocent man? No fault in this, 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 uh, this man, Daniel. No fault whatsoever. But they take him. Here's the law of the land. Now the king spake, and he said unto Daniel, Notice he so cared for him, and he so wished for him to be delivered. And he said, Thy God, whom thou serve continually, he will deliver thee. In other words, King Darius knew very well that Daniel's God is the God that is able to deliver. He must have heard it, of course, in the history of, the, of Daniel who helped uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. He must have heard perhaps the events that happened earlier in the history of the Babylonian where Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were cast into the uh, furnace of fire. And he knew that Daniel was a man that loved his God. And so he said, notice, he said, Your God, Daniel, whom you serve, Daniel. He noticed it, that he was a faithful servant. He will deliver thee. And so just to conclude, beloved brothers and sisters, we read in verse uh, 17, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. In other words, the king could not do a thing except follow through with the law of the Medes and the Persian. But the beautiful thing to see here that he did realize that the God of Daniel is able to deliver Daniel from, uh, from this situation. Just let me close with a verse or two from the book of Psalms. Psalm 34, Psalm 34, and then verse 7. Psalm 34 and verse 7, The angel of the Lord encamps around, round about them that fear him and deliver them. The angel of the Lord encamp round around his people and he delivers them. Notice verse 19 of Psalm 34. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Many afflictions God's people are experiencing in their lives. But the Lord is delivering them. Sometimes he allows them to go through this situation. Some he even take remove out of this world and take them into his own presence. But there are many, many afflictions that God's people experience in their life. Just one more portion in Psalm 37. 
And we will close with that. Psalm 37, and I marked for myself verses 39 and verse 40. For Psalm 37, verses 39 and 40. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. What an encouragement it is for us all, beloved brothers and sisters, to see that, uh, that Daniel uh, 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 was obedient to the Lord, and yet he was going through trials. He was going to be now cast into the lion's den, but we will see in the second half, and hopefully in our next week we'll conclude with this sixth chapter. We will deal with verses 18 to verse uh, 28 of this chapter and conclude with to see how the Lord delivered uh, Daniel from the mouth of the lion. And then you could see that uh, God was always there. And the lesson is for this, for us to learn is in twofold. For Israel, for the Jewish people during the time of the Gentiles, Luke 21, 24, during this long period of time of the Gentiles, which began at 586 BC and will end at the second coming of the Mashiach at the end of the tribulation, the people of Israel will always experience persecution, tribulation, trial until the last days of the times of the Gentiles, when the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled and then Israel as a nation will come to know the Lord. So persecution, tribulation, trials, and, uh, and, and you might say testing will come upon the Jewish people throughout the history of the times of the Gentiles. For the church, it's very much similar. This world is not the home of the church. Heaven is our home. But believers, Christians, believers in the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, do experience tribulations and trials throughout the history of the church age. But once the Lord will come and take us to be with Him, a, a sorrow, suffering, and trials will no longer be. And how wonderful it will be when we will be with Him, with the Lord Jesus in glory and never anymore those trials and tribulations that believers experience as we are here in this world. So with this, beloved brothers and sisters, we will conclude this uh, portion of the meeting for tonight. I want to close in prayer, uh, and then when we finish with praying, we will end our uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, live um, streaming and we will conclude with some questions and answers that our group here on on the zoom will have the privilege to ask or state some statements so let's pray let's just ask to the lord to let's give, give thanks to the lord father we just want to give thanks for the meeting today for this very interesting portion of the word in daniel chapter 6 thank you for a man like daniel and the uh, we pray that you will raise many uh, godly men and women as well during these days in which we live in. We give you thanks and ask your blessing upon what we heard, for we ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. So, beloved brothers and sisters, we say shalom to you all, and then we will just end with this Zoom, uh, with this um, YouTube and Facebook meeting. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Thank you.